Hi right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So I actually just got done filming a video that involved using this vacuum chamber here to test something from that book. Unfortunately, that video is going to take me a long time to edit, and actually there's something that you really ought to know before watching that, and so I figured I had to film this video real quick here. So what I'm going to be doing today is putting some water, this is some ordinary tap water, you can see there, <clears throat> and I'm going to be putting that inside the pressure chamber and sucking out all of the air with this vacuum pump here. So here we go, let's put this inside. I'm going to be putting the water inside of this little beaker right here. Just tip it in. I think 60 milliliters ought to be plenty. All right. Now that white stuff in there is magnesium sulfate anhydrous. And there's also a little bit of a calcium sulfate inside that little bottle there. That's all to absorb water vapor so I don't ruin my very expensive pump here. <clears throat> It'll also help me maintain a high vacuum. And uh, this is actually a freeze dryer and I've removed the drying racks here so I can do experiments inside of it. Unfortunately the pressure gauge and temperature sensor are up there so I'm gonna have to, you know, use my own temperature gauges and stuff. So let's actually put this in there so you guys can see that the chamber is not being cooled. And then this little guy will be measuring the temperature of the actual water. Let me actually change that over to Celsius so you guys don't give me grief. A little clock so you guys can see what time it is. And now I'm actually going to add to the water some pieces of calcite. That's to help the water boil more smoothly. I don't know if you've ever tried to boil water in a vacuum chamber, but it has a tendency to explode if it doesn't have lots of nucleation sites. And uh, I really don't want it all over the chamber. Okay, I think that's everything. Let's close this up. You can see my little pressure gauge on the front here. This is a mercury barometer, which is very short. As you can see, this is for measuring high vacuums. And uh, as it vacuums out all the air, the weight of the mercury will push down and this will come up. And the difference between the two will be your pressure. And over here, is graduated in millimeters, so you'll be able to read off the tor. You see, all liquids have a vapor pressure, and the warmer the liquid is, the higher the vapor pressure will be. At 100 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of water is one atmosphere, and so the water boils. Basically, it evaporates from the entire column of material. At room temperature, water's vapor pressure is much lower, and so it is stable and it does not boil. But if I start to remove the atmospheric pressure, the water will boil. And theoretically, if I continue to lower the pressure, lower and lower, the water should continue boiling and actually lose heat, because the water molecules bouncing around, the hottest ones, the ones with the most kinetic energy, will leave as a gas, leaving the rest of them down in here colder. Theoretically, I could do it until the water freezes solid. Let's uh, set everything up. Let's turn on the vacuum pump. Okay, vacuum pump is on. You can see the water is starting to bubble. That's dissolved oxygen coming out of solution. Because now there's no more pressure holding the oxygen down. Here we go. The mercury, the weight of it is becoming more than the amount of pressure that's being forced on this side. So you can see the atmospheric pressure is dropping. Right now the atmospheric pressure is about two inches of mercury. About one-tenth of the atmospheric pressure normally. But we're gonna go much lower. You can see the water is now well and truly boiling. That's because the pressure from the atmosphere on top of the water is less than the vapor pressure that the water develops on its own. In fact, it's beginning to boil quite profusely. And it's causing the pressure to maintain at a higher level. If you look at the temperature gauge, you can see that the temperature is actually dropping. See that? Even though the water's boiling, it's actually getting colder. Let's see, what is the pressure right now? It is roughly one centimeter mercury, 10 millimeters. 
Oh no, it's throwing the water everywhere. That's gonna be a problem. See, that's what the boiling stones are supposed to prevent. Oh well. Let's just let it do its thing for a little while. You know what, I think it's actually freezing. Yeah, those are ice crystals forming in there. <laughs> it actually worked. Unfortunately, my thermometer has stopped working. Maybe the pressure was too low for it. You can see we're down to just three or four millimeters of mercury, which actually is the right pressure. So yeah, that water is actually freezing. How cool is that? Yeah, you can really see that it's slushy from this angle. Now this didn't take nearly as long as I thought it would. You can see now that I'm letting the air in, the level of mercury is rising. Okay, let's actually see if this thermometer will come back on. And it will. I'm reading 0 0.2.1. It is 0 centigrade. Means it's at the freezing point of water. Let's see if I can pull this out of there. What have we got? <laughs> it's cold. There's actually ice here. Look at that. Same thing that would have happened to the water if you were to set it out in space, or probably the same thing as if you would put it on the surface of Mars. Alright, so I'm actually going to start this over again with some fresh water and a dry rag here for better insulation. And I'm going to let this go until it completely freezes solid. So everything's the same as it was last time, except that I've added some pieces of charcoal in there to act as floating boiling stones. And it appears that the temperature in the chamber has actually risen a little bit because of the water absorbing onto the desiccant releases heat. But I've insulated the water, so it really shouldn't matter what temperature the chamber is, really. Okay, I got this camera going. Let's turn on the vacuum and see what happens. We're at 0.1C, 0.2, and I believe, yeah, it's beginning to freeze. It's an ice spike. Ah, that is so cool. <clears throat> As you can see, this has been going on for quite a while now. The pressure is very low. It looks to be right about one millimeter of mercury, maybe two. So the water is definitely completely frozen. In fact, I can see that the water's begun to sublimate a little bit. You can see the top of it there is a little bit fluffy as the water is removing itself. Look at that ice spike sticking out of it. That is so cool. You see, once the water freezes, the vapor pressure doesn't just go to zero. It still has some vapor pressure and it will actually continue to sublimate until it reaches about negative 50 degrees. That is assuming that the vacuum is perfect. That's uh, how this freeze dryer actually works. You see the uh, internal temperature of the chamber is holding at about 60. Now, judging from the pressure we have, I'm guessing that the temperature of this ice right now is maybe negative 10 Celsius. Let's open it up and see if I'm right. I have to let the pressure back in slowly, otherwise the mercury might shoot up and break the glass. But other than that, this is a cool little pressure gauge. Perhaps sometime I'll make a video of me making it. Okay. Let us see what our temperature gauge gives us. Let's turn it back on. Negative nine, I was right. Uh, negative 10. Haha, <laughs> that's awesome. Let's have a closer look at this. Yeah, it's not coming out of there. How about that? Frozen water. And keep in mind, it froze inside of a chamber that was at 60 degrees. Just because it was in a vacuum. 
It looks like my desiccant's a little pink. I'm glad it's there though. It'd be a lot of water for this pump. If you guys haven't already guessed, I used this process in my making solid oxygen video. You know, liquid oxygen will boil till it freezes, just like water will. So I think I'll leave you guys off with the time lapse of this last run. Let's turn that off now. And until next time, I'll see you then.